Hello everyone, Nasnogami here, welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium, where we last left off. Aside from collecting loads and loads of bottles, uh... ...and money. Let's see, we talked with some people. Some, uh, drunks who actually know our character. Our, uh, Tequila Sunset. I actually interacted with him during his drunken bender. And, hello, your bag is... Glitching through your pant legs. Weird. Anyways, then we came across a, a a man and his son. The man, I think, might be part of the RCM. If Esprit de Corps is anything to go by, talk about the history of a building and whoop de dum de dum. Yeah, is I'm not obsessing over what it is as much as um, uh, I'm just obsessing over the name. And then we viewed an an execution site back during the the war once upon a time, and hello, a person. Cages. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. Finally! It's you! The missing cryptozoologist! There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Crypto fascist? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. Must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you. Is waiting for you to get back. Uh, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the 881. Yeah, Warlock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bid. Not gonna give him another reason to hate me. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect. It disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. Oh, tell me more. It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. Just how big is it? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid called the Megaphasmodea zoensis. It's about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, um... You're expecting a giant, but you're leaving behind these tiny little traps. What have you discovered so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third-hand accounts. Uh, no one's ever found one. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. 
<clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. Hey, first and third hand accounts. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Are you one of those first-hand accounts? They said there's been a sighting here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Well, let's die out. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. What? Um. Oh great, Encyclopedia has failed me too! Yes, the females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. Ah, so it's an asexual reproducer. Clever girls. Yes, the Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. She designed them? Yes. How they work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and... Having eaten its fill, can't get back out. Huh. We're talking an insect that's probably about as big as a man's forearm. Maybe you could fit into one of these things. Maybe. But what if it's bigger? At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution. But we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimens delicate exoskeleton. And you're using locusts as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. Carnivore stick insect! Seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. What do you do? These traps don't work. They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams which use plants. We have given this some thought. Failure previous efforts by other team which use plants. But you've also included plant matter. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes. What? How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. Living your childhood dream out here? It's not child's play. Just because I have to traipse through the mud every so often. You're discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. And not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. Though, so how many have actually been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Yeesh! Over 4,000 
cryptids listed, but you take about half the list as hoaxes. Two were categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. And out of the remaining 2,082, only two of them have been proven to be real? Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. I don't even know what to say. It's a small number of discoveries. Do you know what the success rate in pharmacological research is? 0.000003% of bioreactive agents have reproducibly beneficial effects. Yet science persists in the search for medicine, as we persist in our search for new species. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him, or swaying his opinion. Right. Yes? Free. Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. You've been out here for days and you're not finished with the traps. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Oh, we got someone. A steam friend playing. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Reed crabs! Ew. You won't let Lena down. Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. Didn't know if phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. Oh, so he's not. The, the first hand account, but his wife is. She cited it? Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. You can go back to the whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? Oh, come on. I'm sure you, sure you put enough locusts in these traps. What, just give it like a few hours? Go back, see your wife, shower, eat. Might. Or maybe one of you can go back and rest up. And then come back and the other person can go swap out, take shifts. He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. Well, we check them for you. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. I mean, Kev might not agree with me, but hey. You guess they are kind of similar? Cryptozoology detective work? Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are the traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church, the third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, 
you should check at least one of those before returning to this one. Since I just said it, this one's more of a technicality. But still, better safe and stupid than sorry. Right. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Well, aren't you having fun? Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as fun. But have it your way, detective. If you think it's important, you have been right before. I do if there's a pheasant in one of the traps. Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. And I carry in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Uh, okay. Wise choice. I hope you're not paying this. It dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Okay then. Right, which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Yeah, exactly. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, You'll have time for that later. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? I'll get going. You talk to this guy. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Uh, I'd audio skip there. Yellow man. I mean, officer. Excuse me! The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man, interesting. This is something to ask him about, after a little probing first. Racist! I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. And eh, nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacom. He pronounces Revacom with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. You a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes. And I've learned some things along the way, but I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. Know anything about the man hanging behind the whirling in rags? Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taking care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. He said Reva Call? I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. Crypto fascist indeed. He winked at you, trying to relay some hidden message, inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. This your mug? My mug? W why would you think that? You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. 
Still seems suspicious. I imagine the mug was found at the scene of a lynching. Okay, okay. I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? No, I want information. Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. How did you get into the trash container? Yeah, it was locked. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. You put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling of rags, into that trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged. And I saw him stripped naked, all the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Well, naked except for his underwear and those leggings. Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well... I threw the mug there, and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. We know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. But I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth. But he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. Moving on. I hope I can help your investigation. In my small way. Hmm. Does this mean you were in his apartment? Admiring his colonial mug collection? Perhaps it would be interesting to tell him. So, Gary, you live nearby an apartment in Martinez? Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Ah, uh, you're the weasel! You found your door open lately? In my home. Yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Mr. Evar, Claire thought it necessary to unlock your apartment. Mr. Claire unlocked my apartment? I did for his request. So you work for Everard Claire? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. Yeah, I'll know what it was, but he doesn't like you. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. Stupid. Shouldn't have run my mouth loud like that. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. You're a surprise to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, 
Truly. Tez a native of Ravishal. Oh, yes. Of course he is. I was just speaking about his... connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Yeah, can we do that again? Not many Seolite... No. No problem at all. Uh, composure. Where is my... Okay, it's a little bit better. I can't change clothes. Do I have anything? Composure. Well, let's go Always for it. It's a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. Go for it! That yes! shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. Something worn underneath it? It sounds like he's wearing some kind of armor under his clothes. You can't tell it's there just from looking at him. Probably stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. Oh, I see you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was. I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. Oh, uh -huh. I was not expecting this. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, morale. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. Why'd you lie to me? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. Why did you, you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Seolite officers commanded the Suzerain's Navy. Most of them sided with the King when... They were thoroughly conservative men. He realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. You know who killed the hangman? I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. Ah, uh, so that's why. Evart had us unlock his door. Why he has something against the weasel. Because he was spouting theories that the Union killed him. This is all he knows. Give me that armor! He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling off his sweat. Ew. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Be done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, 
I won't mess with Mr. Claire either. You have my word. Thank you for your cooperation. We got another level up out of that! Let's unlock something. Put something in there. Let's go for this one. Moving right along. Oh yeah, the armor. We gotta look at the armor. We so gotta look at the armor. Eh, maybe later. Maybe I'll wear it later. But not now. Why is the audio skimming out so much today? That patch of reeds over there, it's a great place to hide something. Kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. What's this about? Nothing. Just a hunch. The hunch passes, leaving you there by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. Well, now you got me curious. Not picking up anything on my little, uh, there was something there. But then Inland had to go and discard it. How about this thing? I guess it's time to go looking. Oh, here's one trap. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building loom over the reeds. They whisper amongst themselves, confidentially. Snowflakes cling to their shivering stems. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. No need to grin, I'm not expecting to find anything. I'm helping some citizens and getting some fresh air. I meant no offense, just... Okay. Northeast of the Fell Building. Near the canal I crossed. This is gonna take a while, isn't it? We got these posts here. Oh, I only now just noticed this tent. There's things hidden all over me. Oh yeah, the bridge we can't hit.
Or wait, no, there was a way around the whole time. Dang it. I feel a little dumb now. Hello? or early 20s, kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. Yeah, child's freezing. Where's your hat? Huh? Maybe she didn't hear you. A little louder. I said you should have a hat on. So should you. Eh, uh, uh, come to think of it, I should. Where would I get one around here? I don't know. Some kind of a store? Maybe a general store? Look, man. Fuck the hat. What did she just say? That's not how a civilian is supposed to address an officer of the law. That kind of language really necessary. I'm sorry I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. Oh, f it for me. Ah, dang, this audio is so bad. What's your name? A cell. Her hair is dyed blonde, with dark roots showing. There's a coarseness to her features, some masculinity below that timidness. Surname? Why? From the police, it's for the paperwork. Okay, it's Berger. A very common name. You have little reason to doubt that's her real name. But she's not all that surprised by this cop show questioning, is she? That device you have there. This is a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. The wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. Contact microphone. A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called Contact Mike. What I was supposed to do with this? No idea. How does that thing work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure born sound, if you like techno babble. Where'd you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palisium. Palisium? Oh man. You haven't been to the Palisium? It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. Sounds interesting. Who's Arno? Oh yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisium going kind of person. Uh, let's go back to the contact. Yes? Does that mean you do a contact mic? Uh, yeah, I record stuff with it. Now the boxer! Ah, uh, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact mic just beats people up. Yeah, I'm not gonna press any further on that. Okay. What are you doing out here? Recording, I guess. Recording what? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that will sound. What happened to them? My boyfriend sold them. Oof. I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. Uh, selling them? A lie. They were probably pawned off for something suspicious. And the recordings? Were you recording? The musicians in the Palisium used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Yeah, I've heard of movie studios making recordings of different sounds and such for various sound effects. So, I can get that. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. She looks at the recording device, 
the things she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish, very useless all of a sudden. Take this, you're cold. Oh. No, man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. Oh, she's wearing a heavier jacket than you are, Kim. It's okay. It said it was supposed to be a music place. What is? That. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisseum or something. Stupid. It's really not going to be a Palisseum, that's for sure. Boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys, they're inside, in the tent. And why is that? Bravery's now here while the boys are inside. They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff. Music stuff, mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. And there's piles of it. You know, like those headphones your boyfriend sold. Yeah, they were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. And why not just leave some of the outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. Now this is where a hat would come handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. Go ahead. Tell me more about the music place you've been playing in the church. It's supposed to become, like, a club. For anodic dance music. Like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisseum. Except that... Yeah. Anodic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic. Music that's made with electronic instruments. Like? Synthesizers and tape consoles. Microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds. Stuff like that. You see clear, beautiful, violent flashes of light. Light cutting through a smoke-filled darkness. That is what the future will look like. If it ever comes. Uh, we are always imagining a very... technologically heavy future. But even when it seems like the future is here, it's never there. Why well, turn the church into a club? I know. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey, you two are cops. Yes, why do you ask? Okay, well... Maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys. Because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? Sure. They're inside that thing there. Would be cool if you did. Was there something else? Did you put the padlock on the church? No. No? Not really, no. Not Really? She's trying to get out of a direct lie with semantic tricks. She personally didn't put the padlock on the door. Okay, if you personally didn't, then who did? Yeah, you know, that's what I meant. Noid did. Noid put the padlock on the door. Why? To keep more weirdos from getting in. Fucking Martinez. I'm sorry. It's got the worst weirdos. If you get around to it, ask Andre about them. He'll tell you. Go ahead. Seems frankly comfortable being questioned. Why is that? Well, it's just questioning, right? You're just questioning me. It's what cops do. You've been questioned before? Once or twice, yeah. I'm sorry I haven't had the Revachol experience they get east of the river. East of the river? Rich people. Rich people are east of the river. Uh, okay. Yeah. What trouble you've gotten into? The usual. I had a shitty run as a teenager. You know, drinking, getting into fights. The ugly stuff that happens when you move out your parents' place at 13. In Forberg. Oh, Interesting term. Time to glean some knowledge. It's in Falberg. Is this a rhetorical question? Why do you move out at such a tender age? My dad was a drunk. Plus, I guess... I just wanted to drink too, you know, get my party on. Drinking, partying, disco music, or bad for you. you take me as a warning example. She nods very cautiously. Uh, that's it. Okay, bye. So, uh, can't believe we didn't notice this tent before. Boy, I can hear music in there. The tent is 
just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men, all in forward-looking apparel, reminiscent of the sticker on the padlock, are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. It's safe to assume this is their leader, or at least he thinks he is. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. No. Oh. Oh, that's music. Yeah, it is really crowded. But this is some sweet music they got going on. But we'll talk to them next time. Till then, this is Nazo, signing off.